Okay, so welcome back, uh, part five. Um, so this is really the finishing of the uh, aircraft, uh, the CX Mini Res, and the idea is um, because there's no actual finishing on the pictures, I thought I was going to—I'd be very good to go through a build process of basically a snag list of what it is I'm going to do. So first thing I'm going to do is going to be sand the fuzz Now that I've sanded the fuzz, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mark out the positioning for the uh, main wing to join the fuselage. So we've got our screws. I have measured my little centre lines on here. So I am just going to add the fuselage like so, there's my centre line at the back and when I am happy have a good look round like so, that all looks good. Now I'm just going to gently push down on here like that, not going mad and now when we take that off you can just make out centre of the bolt there and centre of the bolt there. All I now need to do is drill straight through the centre of these two. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down and cover and hinge the tail surfaces. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tail set to the boom. So we have our boom and I have, where I've added that centre line here, right down the centre of here. So in fact let me just show you, that's the centre line I've marked down the two. Now, obviously what we don't want is that boom extending past that centre line because this is going to be the hinge line for the rudder. So the idea is that the boom is going to sit very close to the end. So all I'm going to do is just come in a couple of mils short and I'm marking with a pencil. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap a bit of tape across here. And what we actually want to do with a um, Dremel type saw, and what we're going to try and do is we want to cut um, a slot straight as you can across there just wide enough for this to be able to slot in like so and fit right to the bottom. Now, the thing I would say is just remember that the slot you are cutting needs to be tapered because obviously the um, you've sanded the aerofoil section um, for the rudder. So, that's the next step, is I'm now just going to cut this slot here. So there we go, I have um, added the fin, and it's quite a tight fit, which I like. So the idea is it's going to fit on the bottom of the uh, carbon rod, like so. Ooh. There. Now, 
All I'm going to do now, this is why I didn't want to cover it first, all I'm going to cover it first, all I'm going to do is I'm now going to very, very gently scribe a line here. I now know that's where I can finish my covering so that now I know where to finish my covering and it's going to look dead neat and pucker. Okay, so I've got my uh, hinged rudder and I've cleared away the film around the glue area so I'm now going to slide this in and it's a lovely tight fit making sure that I've got the, the rudder is moving, it's not impinging on the rubber, just rudder just here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make that it's make sure that it's sitting square and then I'm going to add some um, cyano onto this. I'm not going to use um, epoxy because I think it's going to make it too uh, heavy. Okay, so the fin's gone on very nice. Just be careful when you're wicking your super glue in here that um, it doesn't get in the hinge line or anything. Now, next thing we're going to need to do is to remove this little thing that we've been treasuring in this plastic bag, which is obviously to fit on the boom. And I'm just checking mine, and mine appears to fit very well. All right. So the idea is that that is going to get glued to that like so. And then the tailplane sits on the brackets like so. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to pop these in here in the reverse just to make sure I've got this all lined up. When I've got it all lined up, I'm going to wick a bit of super glue around here. When that's finished, I'm then going to add that way, by the way. Good tip to remind you. See those nuts there? Um, what you want to do is go that way because then they're not going to pull out. So the nuts face down. So that's basically going to get joined like that as accurately as possible. When I've done that, I'm then going to join this using these two bolts onto there like so. Then our next plan of action is we are going to add this, get it nice and square, and then glue it in place. So I'm just going to prepare all of this, and then I'm going to take you to the bit where we actually join this, or this, to here because there's one little added extra I think is important to add that's not mentioned in the kit. Okay, so we've added the fin. I have added the block. So obviously this is just, they're just screwed on at the moment and that's all sitting nice on there. Now, the idea is, is this is block is now gonna sit on here. Now obviously what we wanna do is, I would just bring that just back so you're just um, you've got a little bit of, of a, just a small gap between there. Now, the, what I'm going to do, I am just going to add a clamp. Just be careful that the clamp's not too strong and doesn't damage the carbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that roughly in place and then I can just spin this to make sure that I can get this all square. So that basically I'm going to get that this bit here is at 90 degrees so I'm just going to run through that when I'm happy with all of that position all I'm going to do is I'm going to very very gently and just make sure that you mark where you're going to put this uh, glue this and just give it a little gentle rub with a little bit of um, just a very small bit of emery don't go mad and then I'm just going to wick some Sino just into this area and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you um, a little add-on which I've been advised is a good thing to do. Just make sure that you, this is obviously working properly. Well, I have um, done the little tweak that I was going to mention. Um, obviously, the, I've got the tailplane mounted. Now, what I've done here, can you see this? 
I've just added a little bit of carbon fiber, this like twill, which I flattened out and then I pinched it over and then I've just whipped super glue around there because I don't, I wasn't happy about this. And as I understand it, um, Vincent has suggested that you can actually just put a, a thin strip of paper around here just to hold this in place. But that's my little uh, Nick Chitty mod for that. And um, so the next step is, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm then going to add the boom with the tail set mounted onto the fuselage to check for fit. Okay, so I've managed to get my boom in. Uh, I've got to warn you, it did take me some time. Um, I started off just gently using a file and then I was coming up against the internal of the ply there so I ended up actually gently, very gently taking my time and easing it with this uh, nice milling burr. Um, now the position, there is no position on the uh, pit, the only clue I've got on the pictures is that a finger pointing to that there so where this um, obviously you don't want this boom going past there because that's where the wing bolt's going to go through so according to the pictures it finishes just at this plate here now I'm not fixing this in yet because I am now going to cover the wings the next thing I'm going to do is check out the cable runs for the servos to the tail surface and prepare the boom for the uh, push rods to go through the boom. Then I'm going to connect up all the tail surfaces with their horns in the correct position and then secure the boom and make sure that it's all square. Right, okay, so the uh, next step is attaching the boom to the fuselage and let me just talk you through the process that I actually did. I spent some time getting the boom to fit down inside the fuselage and I really would uh, suggest you take your time doing that. Finally, the last thing I'm going to do is cover the wings. I have covered my wing, ooh, shiny. And then I have my fuselage, which I'd already covered, because I just found it was easier to cover it before I joined it. So, I then mounted the wing to the fuselage and then slid the boom in. Now the key thing to remember with the boom is it goes, it finishes just there. There's just one picture on uh, the build pictures but somebody's like doing that. So let me tell you this rear former that takes the rear wing bolt the carbon fiber tube fits against it. So there you go, one CX Mini Res fuselage finished. Now, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm not adding the control horns at the moment. The next thing we're now going to do is I'm now going to um, fit these control rods and I'm gonna start from this end and I'm gonna prepare the holes here and I'm then gonna feed them down through the fuselage to the server. Okay, let me just show you what I'm doing with these push rods. Um, I think at this level of build, everybody's gonna have their own idea and everybody's gonna be an expert. Um, uh, let me show you what I've done. I've just marked with some masking tape um, where I think the exit holes for these uh, tubes are gonna go and I've got one there for the rudder. So all I've done is I've actually put some tape over there and then just laid it at the right angle remembering that obviously the horns are where the side the horns are so all I've now done is I've now cut that to length and what I plan to do is very carefully I'm just going to apply a little bit of um, super glue do not 
get super glue anywhere near the ends of these because it will just let's see it's game over um, so I'm gonna have to be very very careful about adding the super glue there so I'm adding the glue there then when I've done that I'm leaving this end in the fuselage free at the moment and what I intend to do which I will talk to you about is I'm going to add the horn and the hook possibly in reverse um, for this reason and the reason being is is that I less likely to pollute the Bowden cable or the tube with super glue if I pre-make the control surface end it's all dry slide it in and then I can do the mucking about in the fuselage I think I'm less likely to have any accidents and set it up I'm less likely to have any accidents with um, super glue getting down on these tubes now one last little tip if you've got any silicon spray just give this carbon rod just the slightest silicon spray and the other thing I've done is is I have literally just run that on there to put that onto a point it would make it a lot lot easier just remember try and get these the white tubes cut to length before you start the reason being is particularly if you were to cut them in the fuselage when you cut them the pipe gets pimped sorry, gets crimped pimped gets crimped slightly so what will happen is you'll get some resistance on the push rod so my advice is try and get everything set up to lengths before you start doing any gluing and then when you get to your gluing be very very careful I'm actually using thick cyano I'm not using very very thin cyano because it's just it's, yeah it's just believe me it's just going to spoil me day if I do that so uh, I'll let you know how I get on I'm going to install the radio gear we're all done let me just show you what I did to finish off with the push rods uh, there you go so cut a small hole in there and then drop that in let me just show you the rudder side as well I've just got to tighten up my film a bit because it's there you go that so there's the um, that's the rudder one there let me show you what I did in the fuselage just pop this screw off now at the moment I don't have a receiver in here I'm running a bog standard I've not even looked at a special battery at the moment I've just got a 300 milliamp power nickel metal hydride and that's the planes coming in at 150 grams at the moment now um, let me show you bear with me here you go so the servos that you can see are Emacs metal geared ES9250 MDs I use two of those and you can see where I've got my heat shrinks on um, so that's the gear in and there's plenty of room for the battery so so I hope you enjoyed that build it was fairly lengthy a um, couple of things work I'm trying to sever my thumb haven't helped <laughs> um, now I'm gonna leave final comments about the kit and that to the test flight now the one thing you're going to notice no tow hook at the moment out of personal preference what I would like to do is I'd like to fly mine so I'm just going to pick a lightish wind day and I'm going to fly mine or even if it's just a couple of few flat field hand launches um, I'm just going to want to fly mine first and I want to get the position of my C of G that I will all tell you about in the test flight and then once I've done that then I'll then re I'll introduce the tow hook and I will show you with the test flight at the end of it I promise at the end I'll show you uh, the tow hook bending and where I'm going to position it it's just a personal choice I just like to um, get the C of G right for me and then add the tow hook to suit